And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford, come right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos. Inside Sports Fantasy Football, where we are covering the NFL Draft on this week's show. Plus, also as well, you'll catch it on this Monday's Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone following all these shows. And if you can, go ahead and give those shows a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, anything that you can do to go ahead and help them out. Plus, the great folks at LakersBall.com. Go ahead and be part of the conversation there in any one of the number of forums that they have. Is greatly appreciated. Plus, also as well, Laker Tom and, of course, our good friend Jamie Sweet are writing a tremendous amount of articles today on the Lakers during the course of the summer. Speculation on coaches, trades, everything under the sun when it concerns the Los Angeles Lakers at Lakerholics.com. Be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. Plus, our good friends at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network, which are constantly following the NBA playoffs. It is sincerely. Appreciate it. Guys, still fishing, still in Cancun, still trying to go ahead and muddle our way through the NBA postseason here, not being a postseason team. So we're going to try and do what we can to go ahead and keep the folks entertained right here at the Lost at the Lakers Fast Break. The major thing going on right now in speculation is in regards, as Laker Tom and Joe Soro have indicated, is who will coach the Los Angeles Lakers. Not too much on the Rumorville front, other than that Darvin Ham is being rumored to be interviewed. He is the Milwaukee assistant right now, kind of busy because they had a game today. But and, and we'll talk about that on the back end of the show. But he is being considered for an interview for the position, and I think that's a great idea. I think he's been someone that has interviewed numerous times with numerous teams over the years, and I think is in line to be a head coach. Sooner rather than later, will it be with the Lakers? We'll find out. Plus, also as well, the continuing hanging cloud over the head of one Quinn Snyder in Utah. We don't know what the status is there with him going forward because their team has been eliminated, as they were last week, by the hands of the Dallas Mavericks. And so we don't know what's going to go on there. We know that there might be changes in store. Danny Ainge is running the front office, so we'll see what happens there. In fact. We'll talk about one of their players if he could become a Laker. And that if that's a possibility out there, we'll talk about that coming up as well. Plus, winning time, episode nine. Almost done with this first season. It is getting close to the you know time where you go ahead and the Lakers have that championship first season under Magic Johnson and also Paul Westhead and everything going on there. So we'll talk about that on the episode as well. But guys. It is the coaching rumors so far. I am so happy to hear that ESPN is reporting (laughs) that the finalists for the Kings head coaching position are Steve Clifford, Mike Brown, and Mark Jackson, because I don't want any one of them coaching the Lakers personally. But Laker Tom, your thoughts on the coaching update so far Wanted to go ahead and mention again, Darvin Ham, who I think is a really solid choice out there. I've really been impressed with his work and obviously the results working with Mike Budenholzer, even though Budenholzer over the years has not been loved very much. And all of a sudden he wins championships. Now everybody thinks he's a great coach. Darvin Ham has been behind the scenes doing a lot of the work in helping Giannis Antetokounmpo become the player that he's now become. I think that, uh, there's an interesting article. Of, there've been several articles about the strategy that the Lakers are deploying. Really, in the coaching search, and you know we're we don't run the Lakers like a regular professional sports organization or a corporation would run. You know, it's instead of instead of you know hiring people and giving them carte blanche to run their jobs and run their departments and so forth. Um, we have an owner who basically has a board of cronies that she listens to and makes her choices for who is 
the coach of the team and the general manager of the team based upon some sort of connection with the Lakers. You know, I like that. I like that analogy, cronies. I like that. Yeah, it, it's it, it definitely is a is a nepotistic system that that it, it's a network basically. They they aren't going to go outside of what they consider to be the Lakers network and getting people. Now and that's not the only thing that they're doing wrong with the coaching thing because the other side of it is is that, and this is this is what bothers me about going after an interview with with him he's a he's a great prospect he's a great prospect for a coaching job for maybe 20 different nba teams but he's not for the lakers because the lakers basically want to star to be the coach because they need to have somebody who has some charisma and, and is is going to you know and and what bothers me about the lakers going out there and and doing their first interview with a, an assistant coach is that why this is how we ended up with the coach we ended up with last time. And that's not to say that it didn't work out well because Frank won a championship, but basically we could have had money. We could have had a Ty Lou, but we weren't willing to give them the perks and powers that are normally given to a coach of a championship contention team. We weren't willing to let them choose their assistant coaches. We weren't willing to pay them, the kind of pay that should be given to that job. And in other words, what we did out of those first three candidates when we filled the position after after Luke Walton left was we took the cheap guy, which is kind of like what they seem to do with a half a dozen different things, whether it's training, whether it's assistant coaches, whether it's facilities for the players, things that you'd think that if making the most revenue of any team in the NBA – that we should be, and, and we're free and liberal. We don't have a CBA limiting what we can spend on these things, and we don't do it. So that's my only complaint about about the only announcement coming out this week being that, you know, two teams just got knocked out of the playoffs, which means their coaches are available. Why don't we ask permission to talk to those coaches? I, I worry about this coaching thing stretching out. And all it takes is a two or three guys saying that they don't want the job when all of a sudden you get a taste of that. And then maybe we lose the candidates that we really want. And then we end up with the delays where we're, we're out there signing players and trading for players without the input from the coach who's going to be coaching them. And then what if we can't get a coach who happens to work with the philosophy of the players that we've got? We all saw what happened with, when, that, when you get into that dichotomy. You have to have your coaching staff and your and your general manager who's putting together the roster on the same page. So I I'm concerned about I'm just concerned about the process. I think that Joe and I last the last podcast, both of us talked about how maybe the coaching decision is even more important than the what they do with Russell Westbrook. Because the coaching decision is something that I don't think unless we get a good coach that that we can't have a negative coach. We have to have a coach that adds something to the situation. And and really for a team that had no identity and no chemistry and no synergy last year, coaches are what are hold that things together. It's not the players as much. It's how the coach handles it. It's how he handles the different players, he, how he handles the the chemistry between the players and and the treating each player differently, knowing what are the buttons that he has to push, who gets the stick, who gets the carrots. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned. I, I wish that I don't like to see delays. I mean, I don't understand the reason for the delays. The logical thing is let's interview everybody. If we got 10 candidates, 10 people that we think are worthy of doing it, let's set up interviews for all 10. Let's not do three. Let's do these three. And then, okay, maybe we'll wait a week and we'll do these three. And we'll wait a week and we'll do these three on some sort of guys that you don't want to lose as a candidate by doing 10 of people at once. But you just delay things out like that. And, you know, and if I had to bet money right now, the Lakers will not have a coach by the time June 26th and the draft comes around. 
And this actually reverses your opinion of just a couple of weeks ago when you said they will have it by the draft. I know that they still when, need to be. It, they, you start the process wrong. You're, they're already buying yeah. the schedule. I, I will say that they still need to do their due diligence on the draft in case they want to buy into a second round or somehow magically they get a late first rounder through a trade or something like that. So they still need to do their due diligence there. But most of your week is still freed up that you could go ahead and do those extra interviews to go ahead and, like you said, have more than just three candidates that you go ahead and do three at a time here, three at a time there. You're dragging out over an extended period of time. Get it done right. They need to be, pro they need to be proactive rather than reactive because it's yeah, like they want to sit back and let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with Nick Nurse. Let's see what happens with, uh, with uh, Quinn Snyder. Well, those are two of your best candidates. What do you mean wait to see what happens with them? You need to talk to their agents. You need to ask permission to talk to them, start a conversation. Yeah. Why would you? I mean, I don't understand starting with lesser than what you really want. Doesn't make any sense. I mean, can you either of you two explain why you would start off with long shot candidates for the job? Are you afraid? Of what the real candidates will tell you? Well, that, uh, you make a good point because the fact is Darvin Ham, again, someone who has not had a head coaching opportunity yet, who deserves one, still is not going to come as high a price as, say, as Jay Wright that Joe has often alluded to. He, you know, why are they asking him? He's retired right now and has said he wants to go back in the NBA. Just feelers just send out feelers it's, it's a very simple process i agree with you laker tom 100 percent. you and i don't always see eye to eye and everything but on this i agree with you wholeheartedly on that and here today to also talk about what's going on with the coaching you know, dilemma the strategy the whole nine yards good man indeed he has returned to us from lakersball.com it is ox 1947 aka joe soro joe thanks for being a part again of the lakers fast break Appreciate all your help with the YouTube comments. And I'll tell you what, big shout out to the YouTube commenters and YouTube followers. We're getting some big numbers from YouTube, so we truly appreciate it. But your thoughts on this coaching situation, because I agree with Tom. This is something they need to deal with now, right away, and get something done sooner rather than later. I don't agree. They need to take their time. I, I, I'm, full, I'm in full support of waiting till after the draft even. I, I'm, they have to get this right. Uh, pardon the pun. They have to get well, this right. They don't right. have to get it right. But the, the uh, candidates are already Because I'm not, I'm not looking at it from a immediate, uh, an immediate effect. I'm looking at it for the next five to six years. We still have Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, God willing, he stays healthy. Let's say if this was just an anomaly of the last few years, we, we have to focus on that because, Either way, we, LeBron, at the very least, is going to play one more year. If they get the right coach, there's a very big chance he'll sign an extension and play two more years. So there's a lot of there's there's a lot at stake here. That 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 is what, why this is important to to know what who's going to be the general in this thing. If the Lakers want to cheap out, then how are we going to assess that? Any other way other than they're not really, really concerned about winning. Really. I mean, they could say they are. But if they're really concerned about winning, they're, they're going to need to take their time and they're going to need to make sure that the right person is here. Uh, I don't think Nick Nurse is a possibility. He's, our, he's signed and... The Lakers have no assets to, to trade for that any, anyways. And I have never been a supporter of using basketball assets for a coach. I think that that's ridiculous. Um, Darvin Ham is an interesting candidate. I, I do like the fact that he's been a part of a winning culture. He's up and coming. He's young. Uh I wouldn't be against him taking over if that was the case. Quinn Snyder uh, seems to have a temp, uh, 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 an even keel temperament. 
uh, without the, you know, uh, without the goofiness of, let's say, uh, Frank Vogel. And I say goofy as in always saying the right thing all the time. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a, really a big fan of that. I like some honesty from the head coach. Uh, I don't see a dark horse coming out of nowhere. I don't see a Jay Wright coming out of nowhere, unfortunately. So they've asked for permission to interview Darvin Ham. Quinn Snyder needs to make a decision or the Utah Jazz need to make a decision there. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they take their time. This is, it's May 1st. I would, I would give it a couple months. I would give it until after the draft. If you have to, I don't, I don't want, I don't want this rushed. And if they cheap out on the next coach, again, you're, it's not going to look good. And, Worse than that is, is, is are the players going to respect the coach? Mainly LeBron, uh, AD. I I think is again he's kind of too cool for school. So coach's I, I power starts with the negotiations that he has with the Lakers. That is going to say a lot to the team. You know, I mean, it's well. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, guys. You order LeBron and J- LeBron and AD around. You knew better, at least. You know, that's why I think that it's really important that the Lakers get a big name because I don't think they can go cheap with if we're talking about Nick Nurse or or Quinn Snyder or or Jay Wright, for example. Any one of those three is going to demand top pay and the right to choose their own bench and and definitely the right to not have the general manager or or Genie's guardian. Overlord come down to the meetings and coaching meetings and, and be involved in practices. Um, those are things that no head coach in the NBA, none of the top head coaches in the NBA ever give up that power. And so I think it's really important for the Lakers to get somebody who's got the stature in the league and the, and the stature as a coach, a strong enough resume and, and charisma that he will have full power to run the team the way he wants to run the team. And if you get somebody else who's paying, who's taking fewer years and a lot less money and, and is going to allow the team to choose his coaches like Vogel did, um, then I think you may have another situation where there definitely was a lack of respect for Frank Vogel by the team in the second half of this year. And I think anybody could see that just watching the way the team performed. It was like they totally tuned him out. So... I want to see a strong. I want to I, see I a think, strong coach I, I, that's that gets the respect of everybody because that'll have a. Uh, we'll we'll have hopefully a couple of positions that we can fill with free agents, especially our MLE. That could be really important positions, and those are positions that are often determined by the coach and the relationship with other stars on the team and so forth. So that's why, I, as soon as free agency starts, it's going to be a handicap if we don't have a coach. One thing I want to ask you guys is I, I'm I'm kind of you know now actually listening to Joe Soro. Uh, Joe's actually uh, kind of actually doing a great job as far as explaining a side, and I I hear him out. This is not a landscape I think in the NBA where we're going to see a lot of coaching changes this summer. So let's look at this right now. Sacramento's looking for a coach. Charlotte's looking for a coach. Maybe if Pops leaves or retires, but when you've done that already, as far as it's concerned, so he may be coming back. So we're not sure of the situation in San Antonio. Brooklyn, they would have already done something with Steve Nash if they were really upset with him. So there's not that many more coaching changes I see in store. So if that's the case, maybe what we're talking four or five spots at the most that are going to be open during the course of the summer on coaching. So that may leave you plenty of time to go ahead and be meticulous in your search. So that, you know, it's not like it's going to be a, a carousel coaching carousel free for all, like it has been in previous years. So maybe you, with the limited number of coaching spots that are available, the Lakers could get, take their time and look for someone that might be like Joe says is going to be right for the position. Well, last time, last time we had a coaching search, we had, two candidates and they both took jobs before the Lakers filled their job. <laughs> so, um, but I'm just saying there's not many teams yeah. out there that 
I, I guess right now, as Listen, a player, obviously, I obviously, you need to take whatever time is necessary to make sure this is the right choice. I don't disagree with Joe with that, but you know, it's not like there's a whole bunch of candidates that we don't know about. It's pretty much, it's pretty much. Can we get Nick Nurse? Can we get Quinn Snyder? If we can't, can we get Jay Wright? If we can't get those three, then who the heck do we go after? But I'm trying to say that there's not many slots. This yeah, so if, so if one of those slots. slots gets filled or two of those slots gets filled, and let's say the coach that we wanted is one of those coaches who takes that job, you want to wait? Last time, two jobs. Last time, last time we, we could have we had Monty Williams, the coach of the year. But do you think <laughs> they're going to be filled in Sacramento or Charlotte? Well, I don't know. At, at that point in time, nobody was screaming and crying and saying, oh, geez, we just lost out on Monty Williams. But in retrospect, they should have been, you know. Um, M Monty Williams refused to coach the Lakers, or I should say turned them down. And no, then, he turned them down. He, he Well, he didn't turn them down. He took another job. <laughs> yeah. He and offered more money and more years. Yeah. Uh, uh, at that time. Yeah, it was the money he, and years thing. They offered him the same thing they offered Frank. So the that same thing that Ty Lue turned down, you know, that's that whole issue. Right. Uh, again, a, a coach is only as good as his tools in the NBA. That's, I mean, there's, there's a few out there that can inspire a young crew and, and make them relevant to a degree. But in terms of a championship. I think that's true for 80% of the coaches, but I think there's 10% of them out there who are the, Phil Jackson's and you know and so forth who who actually can make a tremendous difference. The Lakers don't like to pay. Speaking of Phil Jackson, I, I remember yeah. the last year he coached, they asked Phil to take a pay cut and he right. was not too happy about it. He obviously yeah, took it. That's that's you know, listen, the Lakers have the Lakers have a the way that I put it is we've left championships on the floor because we've been an organization that has been able to succeed because of their legacy and because of the market that they're in, um, despite being dysfunctional in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, we probably should have 22, 23 championships um, had we been run like a real professional organization instead of like this, this crony board of cronies that basically advises Jeannie Buss what to do. Um, so, so you, you know, think you think the Lakers would have won six or seven more titles if they were more like the – Spurs? No, if they were more like, not like the Spurs, but more like, let's say, if, if they were run more like Joel Cobbs runs the Warriors, yeah, I, I think the Warriors run laps on almost everybody. The only reason the why the Warriors run the way they run is because Steph Curry, unselfish. Clay Thompson, not unselfish. Draymond Green, even though That's he's a nut job, play. is unselfish. They play, but all of the moves that they make, the financial moves, the organizational moves, the money they're willing to spend, they do everything in the right way that the Lakers should be doing. They invest heavily in winning championships. They invest because they have the right players to do so. If they had selfish players, they wouldn't be run well. And Steve Kerr is a communal guy. He's one of those guys that's very community-based with the fact that he has three stars on his team that are ridiculously unselfish. I'm telling you right now, the NBA, you're only as good as your stars not being selfish. Now, that you can win with selfish players, you can win with prima donnas, but can you win in a consistent manner? That is also a yes, but you need to have somebody like a Michael Jordan, a Kobe Bryant, a LeBron James that's so insanely talented and getting can. those and getting those players is usually the direct result of having a front office that has a vision. You can't and somebody who and somebody who is a great judge of who is going to be the star players. You cannot look back. Uh, let, let's say in the next, let's say the last twenty five years, you cannot look back and say that in twenty five years the Lakers have won six NBA championships, have gone to eight. Eight finals, and, and and the beginning of that run, the last the last quarter century run, was the acquisition of Shaquille O'Neal, the 
forward thinking trade for Kobe Bryant. The underrated draft pick of Derek Fisher. Yeah, but change that twenty-five years to the last fifteen years. Look, I, I, you guys, and, I have to keep. I'm going to have. Talking, I'm going to have to keep reminding you. Talking about one championship. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to keep having to remind you guys. I think a lot of Laker fans keep forgetting this, and I'm not holding on to this because I want to, even though it's always there, and I have to explain it. Mitch Kupchak traded his star guys a year a year early to get the next big thing, and it was denied by David Stern. If that does not happen, we do not have a drought. We likely have two, at least two more championships between now, between 2020 and, and, and 2010. And, got, and we don't even know what that would have, that would have been a butterfly effect situation. Well, that's we don't know where that would have gone. what we missed, but, but we also, we, we also were, we were, we blew the post Kobe years. We didn't blow it. We did not blow it. Somebody else blew it for us. We did, we had no say in that denial. And when when it's it's like it's like saying, okay, what's a good example? I'm gonna have to use a relationship situation. It's like saying, it's like your girlfriend or your wife finding out you're trading her for somebody else, and then all of a sudden the other lady gets kidnapped. And they, no, she's gone. She's you're never gonna find her again. Okay. Now you gotta go back to your wife or girlfriend and go, uh yeah, I'm sorry. I uh yeah. And and, and that would that started a downward spiral, downward spiral, because Kobe had maxed his body out by 14. Now he had maxed it out probably more likely by eleven. That's why they got swept by Dallas. Kobe's knee was bone to bone at that point. The only thing that saved him in 2012, 2013. And then obviously, you know, we know what happened in 2014 is the fact that we, <laughs> it, 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 I, I'm sorry, guys, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying the fact that we were screwed. We were screwed in that situation. We would have won the at least another title in that run. The Jim Buss area. Listen, the incompetencies of the Jim Buss area, the end of the Cupjack area. Um, but Kupchak the, was not the a, whole a, was period, not a bad era. The whole period when we had Kwame Brown and all of that before we got Gasol, the Lakers have been fortunate to succeed beyond almost every franchise's expectations, but we have left championships and we have left lots of things that we could have done better had we just been well run. We're no. winning despite we, being incompetent and dysfunctional. You have to blame the players too. Okay, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal not getting along cost the Lakers probably two or three titles in their careers. Shaq played in 05, 06, and 07, right? He played not Shaq in 20 and 2001 and 02 Shaq. Actually, he did play really well in 05 and 06. Those years, 04, 05, 06 should have been championship years for the, for the Lakers. And we, we, we you can't just keep blaming management. Those guys did it to, uh, to themselves. They had well, to adjust. Well, and then management, management made a lot but of management and management, and management. Management, 05 was a dead year. 06 and 07, Kobe was playing God on, on earth, but there wasn't a championship team there. But Mitch got it back in four they years. Had, had, we had our versions of the Westbrook catastrophe, and, and, and it's – it, just look at the history of the There's Lakers. There's never been a Westbrook trade I've ever seen in my life at, with the Lakers. I've never seen them make a trade like that and have it go this south. I've never seen it. Oh, no, I think I think it it, it wins the Grand Turkey Prize. As a matter of fact, no in the 90s, that. in the 90s, after Magic had to retire in uh, because of HIV, that 92 to 96 team, if I'm Tom, you were there, you you watched them. They were a very, very liked team by Laker fans. They loved Nicky V. They loved Vlade. They, uh, Eldon Campbell was probably the only one that kind of they wanted a ring by the neck. Yeah. They loved Sidel three, and that team played their to their to their max capacity. Hey, and there, I, there have been a lot of fun teams that I supported. I loved the baby Lakers. I loved the Van Exel teams. You know, um, but the truth of the matter is, is that. The Lakers made a lot of mistakes. Whether I mean, what if we'd gotten Tatum instead of, of Lonzo? I mean, there's a you can go back and you can see that we left championships on the floor and we left them in the front office because we didn't have the right people. If we'd had somebody really sharp running the Lakers, 
for 20 years, the way that you got to uh, give credit way, to Mitch, the way that the Heat have been run by Riley for 20 years, we would have more championships. You you got to you got to give Mitch some credit though in 2015. Well, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what he does. There was the there was a here. lot of talk that it was between Okafor and 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 Towns, right? Everyone was who's going to be one or two? Who's going to be one or two? Then finally, probably the last week, I remember. Okafor kind of took the back seat and everyone was saying it's very it's very clear that Carl Anthony Towns is going to go to Minnesota and the Lakers word is around the campfire is they're going to take D'Angelo Russell. Yep. They they did their homework there. Um how it worked out I, I guys you have to understand not everything is foolproof here. I mean I I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say the Lakers were run terribly when they've won six championships the last 21 years. Just because they're eating crap I mean, now. The last fifteen years. I mean, let's not do the Celtics thing. You know where we. We're not. We just won a championship pick, two years pick, ago. We picked the decade that we win the championship, or you know, the truth no, of no, the matter we're, is, we're the talking. Lakers, you know, the Lakers 20, went ten years without winning. Twenty years. Twenty years. Is, won one, and now we've gone two more years without winning again. Twenty years is is a good number if you're one six out of twenty. Right, but 21. most of the things that most of the championships you're talking about in those twenty five years or twenty years were done at the very beginning, not now. Not not necessarily. They won the first three in the beginning of the decade, and they won two at the end of the decade, and then, well, like I said, we got ten Shaq years later. apart. Man, we're ten years apart from winning them. You know, that's well. At least we won them. How many yeah. franchises go without winning a, a championship? Yeah, well, there's, there's, Look at their I neighbor thought, down the hallway. You can't even count on two hands the number of franchises that have never won. The neighbor down the hallway has won diddly squat. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, and then and, – and yeah, They may have the best – They haven't even gone to a year. finals. <laughs> and I have to hear about them. Oh, how great Ty Lu is and how great their – Lawrence coaching Frank, was oh, they, they were a lot better than us. And, yeah, their two know, stars right. missing more games than ours did. It, 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 and, and you know, if, if you're going to use the same excuse about injuries, then then it doesn't matter. Injuries are part of the game, right? Okay. Well, in our case, this year had nothing to do with injuries, in my opinion. Well, actually, not my opinion. My vision, my visual uh, interpretation is the fact that we traded, and again, I'm I'm at fault with this for supporting it. We traded for a guy that destroyed the entire team for an entire year. <laughs> Pretty close to it. I mean, there is I, no I denying I it. There is no denying it. Yeah. So put your pants back it's up. Like a virus. It's like a virus that affected the entire team. He. he you want to talk about the, the guy that killed Frank Vogel. It, 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 Westbrook killed Frank Vogel. And yeah. you had a bunch of looked like impression. You know, LeBron. Well, Rob, is a, Rob helped. <laughs> Well, LeBron is a sulker. He doesn't he doesn't solve problems. He just sulks when things aren't going his way. And then AD, AD, I've said this, and I'm I feel like it's still there. AD is in AD is is is, is a cerebral guy, and I, I LA pressure might not be something that he likes. It might not be something that he's comfortable with. That's starting to get maybe it maybe got to him. So I, I think that he got overconfident. I think that's. You know, it's that you win the championship and, and you place it spectacularly to win the championship and everything looks so rosy going forward. And it takes a lot of the pressure off because LeBron sort of like proved that he could still win at that age, you know, and AD proved that he can win and he's only 28. And so you look at those two guys and and frankly, both of them since that time haven't, number one, been able to stay healthy and at, at times, even when they're healthy, they haven't really played well, at least defensively or sometimes offensively. So they haven't played it. They haven't, let me put it this way, they haven't shown that the way they played in the bubble was how they were going to play going forward, that it wasn't an anomaly. It wasn't because they were playing yeah. like that before the pandemic yep. stopped the season. But they haven't since, they haven't the last two years consistently shown that. And that's raised the doubt so that people- But they are, have, you know, I, they have oh, though. Fine. Last year, they were playing really well when even when their boys were out. And then when they got into the playoffs, they were playing championship-style ba basketball. They they blew out. I mean, not blew them out, but they, no, they, they won game two, two and three handedly. If AD didn't get hurt, they could have gone all the way. 
Again, it was a it's a possibility. But it would have been harder than in the bubble. Where next year is going to be harder than the I last think that two years. I think that Milwaukee team last year with Giannis playing at the level that he was playing at would be hard to stop. I'm just no, going to say that. Uh, I, I don't believe that. Uh, Lakers would have beat Milwaukee if they were healthy. Lakers no, could have I beat them. With that. I actually disagree with that. I think they really would have. They would not have. They would not have uh, blown a 2 0 lead. I'll tell you that. They well, would not have blown no, a 2 0. The lead. Lakers are up on them 2 0. And no, really. Really, Gerald, if the Suns in game three and four and five, I mean, they they missed they missed one. If they make one shot, that they, they're up three zero. They make one shot, they're up three one. Well, I'm, I'm just telling NBA, you, I don't think that that Milwaukee team would have been beaten last year. I just think that they were too good. At I that. have no doubt. If the Lakers were healthy last year, they would have won that. They would have went back to back. I just don't think the Lakers had enough around them to go ahead and beat them. Sure they I did. Just, sure they did. Schroeder, they enough. really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They had enough. Danny Green, really? Well, Denny Green wasn't on the team. Well, that's right. He was on the team before. Yeah. He had no, I, 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 he's already on Philadelphia by that time. If they were, they were, they were handling Phoenix like, like bosses. Uh, I, I have no doubt that they would have, they had stayed healthy all the way through. That they, they would have beat everyone. A healthy Middleton, a healthy Drew Holiday. Give me a healthy AD who's playing what like AD. This could be a year that. Somebody could surprise because of the injury. Yeah, the be, injuries anything could happen. You're right. Too Maybe. much. Maybe. Who knows? But then again, we would have never known because AD got hurt. So yeah. I know that they would at least beat Phoenix, and they could have. They would have been a favorite going forward. That was the case, but you know, AD got hurt, and unfortunately, we'll never find out if they would have been would have beaten Giannis in and, another uh, universe. In another yeah, universe, another universe but, they didn't get hurt. We well, the coaching, uh, the coaching conundrum continues, so if you have thoughts on who you think should be the head coach of the Lakers, please, we want to hear them in the comments. Read them in the comments. We'll go ahead and answer back with you on Facebook or YouTube or LakersFastBreak at Yahoo.com or LakersFastBreak, wherever you get your social media. Guys, there's still much more to talk about on today's program. We're already 36 minutes in. That great discussion there for you, but... Before we head on out, I wanted to ask, Zach Levine is starting to make some noise. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. I see Joe's eyes rolling already. He's already talking about you know, hanging out with Pop in San Antonio. The thing I ask you is he is a also, like Laker Tom was this time last year with the rumors of Russell Westbrook, coming home to UCLA. He's also a very injury-prone individual. Joe, since your eyes are rolling, I'll start with you first in regards to a possible sign and trade because he is a free agent. It would take a sign and trade to get him to the Los Angeles Lakers. Could this be something that you know possibly the Lakers would be interested in? Uh, obviously, you're not the way I'm looking at well, you now. Well, it's but... for Westbrook, yeah, but that's not going to happen. Well, that's what uh, you would have to do to match salaries. Yeah, he but you'd see... have to. They're not doing that deal for what? Why would they trade Levine for Westbrook and what? Well, if Levine was intent on leaving, he's a free agent. Yeah, he, he's they, a free they, agent. They sign and trade him so they don't lose him for nothing. Couldn't they just yeah. get a trade exception at that point instead of having to deal with that? You got to trade him. Man. Trade exception. Yeah. Yeah. He's no. A free I, agent. I, he can sign. He can Levine sign is him. always hurt. Um, again, if 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 the, if the Lakers didn't have to give up important assets, yeah, of course for Westbrook, but that's not going to happen. The Bulls are not going to do that. And Levine's always hurt. I don't like guards who are always hurt, especially. Big guys, you kind of give them a little bit of a leeway because they're big and, you know, the body handling all that weight and all that activity. I, I, you kind of can sort of justify it to a degree. But a guard who's always hurt, that's nothing's more detrimental to a team than, a, than, a, than, than that, especially if he's making $20, 25000000 million a year, $30 million a year. Absolutely well, not. The Lakers, more than that. There you go. The, the Lakers need – they need to get – Three and four guys. Uh, no more of this third guy BS. That those days are gone. They need healthy players. They need guys that understand their roles, and that's why it's as important as anything right now to get the right coach that can not have them get manipulated by someone like LeBron, Westbrook, or whatever. Hey, you guys want to start? You want? Hey, Le you know the thing with LeBron is you have. You have a little leverage with LeBron if you're a coach. Okay, you can sit his butt down and go. You you have, I mean, even though I don't agree with it, I still pick Kobe over LeBron no matter what LeBron does. But he's got he, he he's get he's trying to catch Jordan right. He's got he's trying to catch Jordan. 
you want to catch Jordan, you better listen to me so I can get you another title or two, or you're going to be stuck on four and your record's four and six. So, mm. so that's, that's, that's the reality of that. Yeah. And that's, that's how David Blatt lost his job. <laughs> I see you shaking your head in regards to that while Joe was talking. Your thoughts. You actually uh, say that too? Here's, here's what, here's what, here's what my thoughts are on that. I wrote an article on it for Lakerholics.com. Number one, Who's his agent? In, enlighten the listeners. No, who, who, who is who is uh, Zach Levine's Jack's agent? Zach's agent. Oh, clutch. Yeah, clutch sports. Um, Do you want me to start cussing on the on the air right no, now? But no, but just think a second. Okay, so let's let's say that he's a he's an he's an unrestricted free agent. He can sign with anybody, and they'll get nothing. So Zach Levine says. Who? Who's going to sign him for forty mil a year? Who has that kind of cap room? Uh, there are I teams think... that will create that capital for like Zach Levine to the Lakers, maybe. No, I think but OKC. Not, I think be, San there'll, San be, there'll, be, there'll be offers out there. So all, all Atlanta... you have to do is you have to you, you have to make an offer that is Westbrook and two first right, first round draft picks unprotected, and um, for Zach Levine. Hell then, no. Then you're going to have to hard cap yourself, which means that you're going to have to probably find a way to trade Horton Tucker and and none, maybe for somebody who makes five million, so that you can save ten million. Then you got enough money, but you'll also have a a ten million dollar MLE and a four million dollar BAE that you can use, and you can still stay under the hard cap, which we know Jeannie would love because it means few luxury taxes. Hey, and Tom, get, I, I and here's the most important part. You get a superstar with bird rights that you can that is the same age, actually a couple of years younger than Anthony Davis, who you can pair going forward so that you solve that problem of who's still going to be the replacement for LeBron. And, you know, it, it just makes total sense because you just announced that that all AD, it's the same thing as the AD deal. All, all Zach has to announce is that I want to sign. I want to. I want to be a sign and trade to the Lakers, and I'm not. I, I, or I will sign with somebody directly, so that there will be no compensation at all for Chicago. If I'm Reinsdorf, I, I and I know this is exactly how he would think. He'd be like, "Good luck. Have a have I a want, nice." I want to just say right now, above thirty million dollars in cap space are San Antonio, Cleveland, and Detroit. Teams like New York. It teams like that, they have to go ahead and make make moves, but they have some cap space that they can go ahead. If they made a couple of moves, they could get into the thirty million plus. Charlotte, the same thing. They just have to make a couple of moves that would free up. No, the they'll next be offers five, for Zach. Minutes. They'll be offers for Zach. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just letting you know there are teams out there who can sign him straight up for above thirty million a year. But you're you're right, Laker Tom. Most likely, it will be a sign and trade scenario. I think for him, so. I mean, would you be upset if he made, the Lakers made a play for him? Because again, the, well, the lure of one year. Personally, I actually agree with Joe that I don't want to see that money tied up in a third player at this point in time. I can Especially understand the, the reason why like. the Lakers would do it because I think Zach is a pretty good fit. It's a perfect fit for for going forward. But you know, all right, I, I think it's a long shot because I don't think Clutch wants to. Clutch has got so much bad take on the 80s thing. I don't think they're going to try to pull that again. Zach Levine, in the last six seasons, 47 games, 24 games, 63 games, 60 games, 58. And this last year is the last time he played a somewhat almost full season uh, since his second season in the league, which he played all 82 games. So this guy has a massive injury issue. But everybody that would possibly get at this point in time, Joe, is yeah, but you're not paying off. them 40 million for the next five years. You can't do that. You can't do that. They look, Rob has a lot of skill set he's gonna need to show here. And the reality is he's not gonna be able to do it all in one summer. Sorry, I, I don't see it happening. He's gonna have to do it in in, in phases, and unfortunately. No, he can do it. it might one, be enough. He can do it in one summer. He get two starters for Wes, for us. That's all he needs. Two starters. Two and, starters and, for us. 
and, and that's going to have hey, to be. Listen, buddy, buddy and Malcolm would buddy and Malcolm for Russ straight up, or even with one pick, will solve most of our problems. Because then we have several other options. We still got THT and none to trade, and we could we but could those guys have to play and, and do the ten million dollar MLE, which will which we could go out and get a, a a great center, or we could go out and get a good power forward or a small forward. Those guys so are going to have targets. to play though. And Heal isn't known as a good defensive player. So now are you just trading? Are you kind of – is it a lot no, of – But he also shoots more threes than anybody in the league except for Steph Curry. Okay. And he does them at a high rate. Okay. Wouldn't it that, be better that just creates, to sign – That creates a, that creates a benefit that the Lakers desperately need. Again, but again, you still, as, the defense is an you, issue. You, you got to – you're going to have to make sure that people are playing, though. That's the – that's the worry I have, and that's that's not going to be necessarily anybody's fault at that point. You're going to have to get Westbrook off the books, and you're probably going to have to take larger contracts that are guys that are typically injury ridden. I I just don't want them signed for five years at thirty and forty million a year. Well, it's one thing to take signed for five years. Yeah, it's one thing. Case. It's one thing to take the three year we're guys. That, we're getting two years. You're getting two years and three years of those two guys. Those two guys, yes, but I'm talking about a Zach Levine or any of these guys. I yeah. Those guys well, aren't going to work. I told you, I, my preference still is to is to spread that money around to multiple players. You need to have a good starting lineup. You know, you can't. You know, we had Westbrook and two minimum salary players starting for the Lakers most of the year. Yeah, because the players are too busy not playing. Well, no, it's because the guys that we paid more money for, THT, ten million, couldn't cut it, and Kendrick Nunn never could get on the court. Yeah, those are the two guys that should have been. Starting THT, along with THT was supposed to be a six man. You know, so you you struck out on two of those guys. You struck out. I don't know necessarily if you struck out on to. THT. The THT is not a starter in the NBA. He's more of no. a bench guy. Yeah, that's that's just. I, don't, I think that's unfair. He's that only we, a bench. He's only he can only be a bench guy on a team with a lot of shooters. <laughs> I, maybe yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One thing I do want to say, though, is the conversation continues. I think Zach Levine's name will pop up a little bit more and more amongst yeah, you know Lakers, Lakers fans, is, whether we like it or not. But if you have thoughts names, on it, man. Yeah, they'll use the Lakers as leverage. That's why their name will be will, will be brought up. Yeah, something like that. But if you have thoughts on Zach Levine, a possibility to the Lakers, we'd love to hear it in the comments. Please let us know. Another name that could be on his way out the door in his team for his team, I should say, is possibly after their early exit, Rudy Gobert, who is the constant source of discussion in regards to an individual who is great during the regular season as a defensive anchor, but in the playoffs, unfortunately, his size and his lack of mobility and his inability to guard on the perimeter ultimately dooms the Utah Jazz year in, year out and is probably in need of a change or looks to be like Utah is going to be making some changes in order for them to go ahead and regain some type of momentum because after the part of the season that they were last year where they were the number one team in the Western Conference and had a great record and seems, you know, like I said, in the postseason, seems to fall out from there. They lost the Clippers. Now this year they lost the Dallas Mavericks and this, the returns are becoming diminished as far as him and Donovan Mitchell working as a unit. There's been reported issues between both of them. It looks like if they're going to keep one or the other, even though Donovan Mitchell has some serious defensive flaws, they are going to go ahead and look like they're going to possibly move Rudy Gobert. So, Laker Tom, I'll start with you. Is Rudy Gobert an option for that Westbrook contract? Because he does have several years, I believe five years on the books. I did an NBA trade machine and set up for this and set up for this show. I did. Hold on. I'm just going to say this. In uh, you're muted, by, by the way. So I will say that I did a NBA trade machine that Royce O'Neal and Rudy Gobert is an even trade for Russell Westbrook's contract. So I'm just going to say why. I just did it for the show. I, again, I'm just putting it out there. I'm not saying I a like team it. that needs shooting would be stupid to fill up a starting role and give a bunch of money to a guy who gets played off of the court in the playoffs. Oh, there you go. And cries when he doesn't make a all-star team or whatever it was he cried about. That guy's Move softer on. than next Charmin. Question, next subject. Butt wipes. Yeah. Okay. And he cried. The guy cried. 
for, for yeah. Pete's sake because he didn't make an all-star team or an all-NBA team, whatever it was. We already have softness on this team. We the need Eiffel somebody Flower. that has some – Yeah, we need – we don't need any delicate da daisies. Um, his name and will always – his name isn't Gobert. His name is Yogurt to me. He, he reminds me of soft yogurt. And it could be because my kids used to eat this yogurt called Gogurt. Yep. And it just it kind of just makes sense to me. So, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I actually put it out there just to get that type of reaction. from. No, you didn't. Yeah, no, you didn't. I guess. You I didn't know that. until I told you. It's like, like but Gobert. I saw fan. your email. Like Gobert poster in the upper corner of your back wall there man no there's no go bear poster <laughs> i don't see no go bear poster there i again he gets played off the court i just described the fact that he gets played off the court every single playoffs i wouldn't say no if it was straight up for westbrook well you have to go ahead and, and put in o'neill's uh, uh add him on there to make i don't care who they add as long as we well, don't well, give them any draft picks they're gonna give o'neill away the way he's played in the playoffs yeah, I'm just telling you know that that's how the salaries would match up. I did an NBA trade machine, so I'm just letting you know. So, you know, you could take it or leave it. I'm Again, Rudy Gobert would not be a great fit. I do know that, like Laker Thomas said, that the Lakers still should be looking for a center. I just don't think that they should look in his direction. But Isaac Hartenstein is the guy we want. A backup? Starting. You want him starting? He's a backup. Would... And the Lakers – and the Lakers – and the Lakers, basically what they need is a guy to start games in the regular season because AD is going to close the games, and then AD is going to start in the playoffs except that we have a big matchup. So a guy like Kevin Love or Hartenstein who play 20 minutes a game is perfect because that's all that, that's all that JaVale McGee got, 20 minutes a game. It's perfect for a guy like that. He's, we had he's, Zubac. He's 18.2 now, has, has, has almost 2.0 stocks per game. He's I a great yeah. rebounder. He shoots threes at 38%, and he's young. And he's we had, we had foot, 250 too. pounds, and he kills us every time we play the Clippers. He's better than he's better than their starting center. He's better than Zubats? I yes. don't know about that. I don't know about that. And keeping Zubats was the right move all along. I think we should have kept him all along. Yeah, but we probably just, should have. That, that, was, was, a, bad that was bad. Yeah. But – but Hardenstein, Hardenstein, the, the problem is, is that they have so many players. They have got such a good roster and they've got two new guys that are going to get paid uh -huh. and they've got money that they've got to give to players that, that they aren't going to be able to afford Hardenstein anymore. He's, I agree. he's their version. He's their version of Malik Monk. They can only give him a 20% raise or use their MLE on it. And they only have a 6.2 million MLE like we do. Yeah. But is he worth that kind of money? Definitely he is. Look at his stats, Gerald. His stats are terrific, and and is the eye test when he's in limited plays. in limited action. So, you, but you're going to devote 18 what? minutes per game. That's all he needs to play with us. So, you're willing to commit how much in money to him? A full MLE? Or oh, I wouldn't give him all 10 MLE? million dollars of it, but I might give him I might give him 6.5. I think he's that good. I think he could be a. You know what he's really good at too is picking. Games. His, his thing is that he can guard. He can guard out on the perimeter like. Rudy Bobert can't do it. He's a guy who really can guard at five levels and guard all five positions at all three levels. So he can't be played off of the floor the way that... Why would Houston Gobert, get rid of him, though? The way that Gobert and all of these other Clippers. guys... Plus, he's, he's a developing so, no. three-point shooter. Hard, hard and signs with the Clippers? He got yeah, waived. He's year old. He got, yeah, waived by the, yeah. he got waived by Houston, got picked up by Denver, played one year with Denver, then... He became a free agent, got picked up, uh, I think, as far as in training camp or whatnot, by the Clippers, and he's had a really good season for the Clippers it's as the great. backup if the Clippers. But in 18 because, minutes a game, he's averaging over – he's averaging like 0.9 blocks mm -hmm. and 0.5 steals in 18 minutes per game. 4.5 rebounds. And you would want to commit $6.5 million to him? I think that we the more and more I think about how we're going to improve this team is that we probably need to hard cap ourselves so that we get the $10 million MLE, which we can split between even two or three players and the $4 million BAE, because this gives us a chance to get some of the people who are free agents, because otherwise we can't sign them. Now we could use that money for Monk, but I think, and part of it we might end up using for Monk, but also we need, we need size. And we need it either at small forward, power forward, or center. And it doesn't matter to me where we get it because if we get one of those, 
that gives us three front court players with LeBron and AD. So it doesn't matter which one we get, but we need somebody who can really add a size and shooting three and D type player. And, and a serious defensive player is really what my preference is. And Hartenstein really is a serious defensive player. His strength is his defense because he, he's really, he's really, he has great hops. He's a great shot blocker and he's able to defend guys in the perimeter. That's, he would be terrific next to Anthony Davis. He would give us that, that uh, the guy with the mobility that Davis has, but the size that the, that seven foot size and 250 pounds that he's got. I think it would be a terrific find for the Lakers. Don't forget the perimeter because we need size on the perimeter as well. It's something well, that's that one of the reasons why I like the Brogdon and Heel thing because we get a six five and a six four guy, and Brogdon is an excellent defender when he's healthy. Yeah, Heel's not, but but he's big. He's at least six four. Yeah, he's, he's six four and he's two hundred twenty pounds. So you know, I don't know, Joe. Any last thoughts before we hit winning time on that? As far as uh, what we've been talking about, uh, we're obviously, well, obviously all three of us are no on Rudy Gobert. Zach Levine, I think, again, I don't think that's going to happen, but, you know, people are talking about it simply because of the UCLA factor. We want two or three players for, for – that's what we got to get two or three. got to get two or three rotation players back. I agree with you. It needs to yeah. be more than one, that's for sure. The so. problem is going to be we're going to need a lot of luck, even if you make the right calls. Yeah, sure. of course we Brogdon, are. Brogdon's been injured the last five years. He's played 48, 64, 54, 56, 36 how many did he get? How many did he play in his rookie year when he won rookie of the year? He played seventy-five. Okay. Yeah, that was his only year that he was close. He was close to playing eighty-two. Okay. Every year after that has been injuries and injuries and more injuries. And I mean, if the Lakers healthy, are not the Lakers just fired their trainer, you know, again. Yep. Again. Um, they think they but think you know, that it's, it's the league, which has been a league-wide problem this year. I mean, even in the playoffs, we got guys just dropping left and right. So what are these guys doing? Are they? You have all this technology, you have all this these nutritionists. What's going on? They're just getting just bigger. More they're just getting bigger and stronger and faster. And is and it is it more torque? It's more torque and, and it's it's, it's the torque and everything on your body when you when you're jumping at those heights and coming down the way that they're doing, um, running at full speed like that. It's just it just seems like the game has gotten. The game has gotten the players have gotten so much more physically, athletically capable, and and when they're flying around like that, and and you have collisions, it's just inevitable. They're Even with the game that's three pointers all day, it's, it's there's no one really banging down low. Yep. Well, just look at the players that are just look at every day. I mean, we've got we've got guys missing in these last four. We're in the sem we're in the conference semifinals. And we got key players missing on almost every team. Well, definitely uh, something to think about again as the Lakers look for a new trainer as well, among other things. That's something we had not yet mentioned. So, yes, uh, seemingly they are out a trainer these days each and every year. So hopefully they can get that rectified and more solidified going forward. But so much to talk about still on the show. We do thank you for watching and listening. It's the Lakers Fast Break. Before we head on out, guys, winning time episode nine. We're almost done. The season is almost over. Magic Johnson is almost ready to win his first NBA championship on the program. This is the leading drive up through the playoffs, the first rounds of the playoffs, when the Lakers are going ahead and getting to that point where they're going to go into the I haven't NBA seen finals. It. So I will say that it is, deals with a lot with the issues behind the scenes in regards to Spencer Haywood, who in real life was kicked off the team on the NBA Finals just before that because of the fact he had a lot of issues going on in his life. And uh, unfortunately, it spilled over and onto the team. Also, it delves with Jack McKinney supposedly being cleared by the team. And the decision is being made by Jim Buss whether or not he should bring him back on or put uh, you know keep what's going on with status quo with Paul Westhead and also as well Pat Riley I don't know as far as how realistic that was as far as Jack McKinney coming back I don't think he was ready at that point in time but I think this is part of the the creative process as far as HBO's winning time is concerned and I'll leave it at that the other main thing I want to let everybody know about is the word that Jerry Buss got from the the people behind the scenes at the Lakers the, at that time, Claire Rothman, 
she informed Jim Buss that they would be losing a ton of money if they did not make the NBA Finals. Uh, and so, you mean Jerry Buss? Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Buss. Buss. Yeah, Jerry Buss. Uh, that they would no. Yeah, Jerry Buss. That they would not be making the NBA Finals. So, I I want you know. Let me know, Mac. Let me know, guys. I mean, I know you haven't seen it yet, but oh, I saw it. You saw it? Okay. Yeah. All right. You got a chance to see because it, it just dropped about two hours before we right. started taping. So, your thoughts on this? I mean, okay. Yeah, I the thought Lakers... it was the best. It was the best issue so far, simply because it had the Lakers winning. You know, we just rolled over teams. And I know, but the the, the fact that and... you know that the again is kind of fabricates a little bit the story of the Lakers and their yeah, money situation. It's... And but you know, I, I for example, I thought Jerry West came through again as being a smart guy who really cared. He didn't even have a position. He's doing all of these things just because he loves the Lakers, and and you know, and and the way that he, the way that he, the way that everybody was just concerned about their fellow teammates and the thing, going through the whole thing with with uh, kicking Spencer, a player out and you know, Spencer right Haywood. in the NBA Finals, and he's been part of the team all year long, and and making the decision that McKinney wasn't going to come back, um, and and Jerry Buss's reliance upon. Upon upon Jerry West to to really give him the right direction and and then also just the obvious portrayal on the show that that Jack wasn't at all ready to come back, man. Yeah, uh, he, he could lose it at any minute and so forth. And uh, um, so it's it's just an, it's just interesting to see. And, and I'm looking forward to the the last the next issue, which I guess is the last episode. Yes, yeah. and, and season one. And uh, and I hate this weekly stuff, man. I can't stand this. This I got is the way it used to go down, my friend. Where I actually have to figure out that I've got to, oh, geez, I'm going to have to catch up with these things. And, wow. and I, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to wait until they, the season's over. Well, this is episodic television. I don't I like episodes. <laughs> this is the way it's been for decades. And well, now I only with the advent of streaming. Never, I didn't do it with free TV, and I don't do it now that I have cable. All right, fair enough, fair enough. But I'm just Dude's letting you know that. and informing you. Yes, they've been doing this for decades as far as episodic television week by week. I know, I know. I, but I, they were trying to lure me into it, but they have okay. been unsuccessful. Only with the advent of streaming have they actually gone to well, it. You're TV. the only reason that I'm doing it for winning. Oh, I, I feel honored. I feel honored. That's okay. Well, HBO Max thanks you as well. But okay. Joe, before you head out, you haven't seen it yet, but you've heard a little bit what's going on. It doesn't seem like it's that outlandish of an episode. I've actually seen, uh, you know, parts of it. I haven't finished it all the way through because we just, again, like I was recording the Inside Sports Fantasy Football, so I didn't get have time to finish the whole episode. But seeing the notes from it and seeing obviously that it's going to come out, we, we know the result as far as the end of the season that the Lakers are going to go ahead and win the championship in Magic Johnson's first year. But your thoughts as far as as we head into the season finale next week? <laughs> He's trying to think of the words. This is going to have to be a five, six season show. Yeah. To, to explain the 80s. So. Because remember, it goes all the way to Magic Johnson announcing he has AIDS. And I believe that is the end. That's the actual end of where the series could go. So is this going to be. Three seasons, four seasons. I guess it's going to depend on if the ratings. I, and, and I always kind of found it interesting how they judged ratings off of a subscription, premium subscription. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Is it that? Is it that the? Let's say the people at HBO monitor that people. Let's say a half a million people signed on to HBO Max to watch that particular show. Is that how? They justify bringing it back, or well, is it actually, it's retaining. It's not just the fact that you watch the first episode. Are you watching episodes two, three, four, five? And once they saw clearly yeah, but... that the show was gaining momentum, that it was actually gaining people viewing it. But how do they make the... money from that? How are they making money? There's no advertisement. You're subscribing. Okay, so are they? Are that a half a million people sign on to HBO Max to watch the show? At that point, that makes sense because you're talking about 
what is no, that? But they're, looking at it, but they're looking at it at the cumulative ratings that they have they have to have enough they have to have enough shows being successful for their subscribers to continue to subscribe. I can't tell you guys problem. though. I can't tell you guys though that during the first quarter they just recently announced that they've gained three million viewers, three million subscribers. Excuse me, and they're now at seventy-eight million by themselves as far as HBO Max. When they combine with the Discovery Plus and they become that one big happy family because the paperwork's already done, they just got to go ahead and combine that whole thing. They'll become over a hundred million subscribers. How does that, that compare point. to Netflix? Netflix, even though they've lost, according to their most recent, they're going they're going financial troubles right now. They're still at right around 200 million subscribers. Actually, more than that, they were at as high as 220 million subscribers. Like half of the country. Yeah, 200. Well, that's around the world. Yeah, they got members that, around the world. That's but worldwide, though, right? At, yeah. After after they lost um, the subscribers from Russia, and they've lost some of the subscribers in domestically here and around the world. Based off of you know, in fact, you didn't appreciate the content or whatnot. They're around, you know, let they're, they're considerably less than 220, but they're still, I believe, around 200 million. Am Amazon is over 200 million. Disney is well above 100 at this point in time, so it gives you kind of perspective where it's at. But and HBO the, Max, the tough has thing, improved. the tough thing with 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 Netflix is they are competing with Disney now. They are competing with Amazon, Apple yeah. Plus. Those guys have enough disposable money to not really feel the effects of anything. Netflix has been running at a loss for years because yeah. they've been able to throw out all that content is why they're still alive and, and throwing out all the subscribers. But they've been running at a loss for years. HBO Max, everybody was worried, including myself, in regards to how would they maintain themselves after they last see after last year? Because with The Matrix, they're no longer doing those movies day and date release on HBO Max. They're actually done very well since then with all the series they've done, including Winning Time. And Winning Time has increased its viewership each and every episode. HBO Max saw that right away, and that's why they renewed it halfway through for season two, which is really a fast approval and a fast renewal for any series. But HBO doesn't make bad shows anyways. They had to have known this was going to go well. well. I think they that they have this feeling, especially when they saw what, what was going on. They knew that a lot of people would be very upset about it, but they also knew that a lot of people would tune in because of it. Well, again, should that's have, uh, have gone to Showtime, though, and then they could have had the correct name. I would have done. No, they should have just done Showtime anyways. There's no confusion over it. If you're on HBO Max and you see Showtime there, you're going to click on it anyways. I, that's, that's a lot of baloney people tell me about that. That's just because the other network is named Showtime. I, I don't know. I don't baloney. know about that. I don't know about uh, that's that. Baloney. That's a bunch of baloney. But if you have thoughts out there mm -hmm. on Winning Time Episode 9 as we head into the season finale next week, please, we'd love to hear your thoughts. A lot of people are talking about it. And actually, again, it's just been some good viewership numbers for HBO Max. So please let us know your thoughts. Before. And also on the way out, we're we'll talking about some NBA playoffs. So please let us know your thoughts on the NBA playoffs as well. Right there in the comments at Lakers Fast Break or social media or Lakerholics.com or Lakersball.com as well. But guys, before we head on out, two games played today and two games. We're going to be talking about two series we're also going to be talking about as well. The NBA playoffs is now in the conference semifinals with today's games, Boston and Milwaukee in a slugfest. Very physical. I enjoyed the defensive battle. This is the way teams should be playing defense against each other. Joe, I'll hit you up first on this. The Milwaukee Bucks went into Boston, and thank goodness they gave them a smack around because I don't want the Boston Celtics to win the series. Your thoughts on game one today and where you think it will end up as far as overall. Where do you think who do you think will win that series? I'll know in the next game. The okay. it really did feel there was a sense of relief. I Giannis is 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 playing at a godlike level right now. And the fact that Middleton's out and they were able to beat them in double digits in Boston. And he didn't shoot well either. And he never does. He's he's just he does he has other things in his arsenal that doesn't it doesn't matter if he shoots well or not. It doesn't matter. He can get to the hole anytime he wants. And he's long and he's good on D and he's energetic and he's positive. God, this is the most impossible. Giannis, Giannis, yeah, Giannis. And, and you know when you when I've talked to guys who with when they talk about physiques and working out and all that, I go. 
I, I use Giannis as an example. If you look at Giannis's, the, you know, genetics, the guy has no fat on his arms. Yeah. And I would always say, you know, because everyone is always quick to say, oh, this guy's juicing and this guy's this, this guy's that. I said, listen, I want you guys to look at Giannis real quick. You see, you see how, see the definition in his arms. I want you to imagine this. If that guy wanted to be a bodybuilder, natural, I go, that guy could pack on probably 30 to 40 pounds in the next three to four years and look like he's on steroids. That's that there are guys out there that are like that. We've seen them in our in our life. Bo Jackson was another guy. Um, so with Giannis being this genetic freak, you know, I I am after watching this game, I was very encouraged that if 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 nothing goes wrong with him, they probably win this in six. But yeah. I think I need to see what happens in game two. I'm leaning six right now for Milwaukee. If they can, I, I just need the Celtics to get out. I was anticipating them making it to the finals with all the fortune that's going on right now. Everyone's getting, everyone's falling like bowling pins right now. And I think maybe the fact that people have already said that Boston's about to go, I think that always plays a, uh, that's always fuel for the other team, especially when they're world champs. Hey, you guys think we're going to lose? We're the world champs. No, we're going to go in there and bust them in the mouth. And they did. And if they win game two, it might not actually go six. It might go five. It might go four. I, I'm i hoping for it. And I, it, it's it's sad to say that other than the fact that they're Celtics because I really love Tatum. I really like Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown. They play basketball the way I like to see basketball. The problem is I can't. we can't afford them winning a, t- a championship. I just we can't we it, it would make it would make the last year just e- doubly worse because now we're right back at square one again and I'd rather be tied with those guys before we win our next title. I don't care if it takes four or five more years. We need to get to eighteen first. Yeah, we have to get to yep. eighteen. We have to pass these guys, and and you can't have them be talking about getting to eighteen before us too. No, That's no, really no, no. they can't. They can't. That can't happen. And and a little bit of me does say that. They're probably going to run into the same problem that they've ran into before. They seem to have a problem. The, the deeper they get into the playoffs, the harder it is that they, they cannot score. Yeah. For some reason, Boston, as they ascend into the higher end of the playoffs, they seem to get into these lulls where they can't score. I mean, it cost them against the Miami Heat in 2020 where they were up in a lot of those games and ended up blowing the leads which kind of killed me too because I was dying to have those guys in the finals because I knew we would have whooped them. And to get number 17 off their backs, that's the third time we lost out on them getting to the finals and possibly winning it. That one, 09 and an 0, uh, uh, 02. 02 and, in winning almost. Time, and in winning time too. Well, the championship the Magic won. The Celtics and Bird – we wanted the Celtics and Bird in that championship thing. I, I think had had Boston gone to the finals in 80, had they gone in 82, they, they should have gone in 82. They blew a 3-1 lead. Um, I think the Lakers beat the Celtics. I think the Celtics might have taken the Lakers in 86. I think that was the only year that the, the Celtics would have taken the Lakers. Uh, well, getting back to the playoffs right but now. Anyways, um, so yeah, so I am. Uh, this is this is. I'm a Laker fan. I, I can't. We can't afford the Celtics to win. Uh, and Milwaukee is showing that they are the champs. They're going to need to get stabbed in the heart before they're out. I'm picking Milwaukee in six. Um, the Warriors oh, game. The Warriors game. This, well, let me let me let me touch on. Let me ask Flavor Tom real quick on his thoughts on the on the game. Flavor well. Tom. Yes, Flavor Tom. Right, indeed, but. Tom, I will say the wings, which were so much a part of the dominating defense against Brooklyn, they are awesome. Okay. When you got smart, when you got Tatum, when you got Brown, they're great. But like I said, uh, like Joe said, the offense seems to bog down at times, but also as well, the physicality and the top end height that Milwaukee possesses with two seven footers. When they bring out Lopez, when they bring out also as well, Giannis, of course, and a third in Portis. When they bring out that those those three big seven footers that come out there, 
that can make things difficult for Boston. I'm also picking Milwaukee in six. I'll pick Milwaukee in six too. And and I think that what's really important about what's happened in, in the playoffs so far has been that the more physical the team is capable of playing, the better that improves their odds in these playoffs. Because mm-hmm. we saw physical defense dominate, you know, completely dominate both of the Celtic scorers. Um, and we saw the same thing. We saw the same thing from Boston when, when they played the Nets. That's how they beat the Nets. They, 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 they got physical with the Nets, but then they, they, the Nets didn't have the inside people that, that, that uh, Milwaukee has. And, and, and that, that makes a huge difference because they, they really, they really have run into a team that can physically overpower them. And that takes away from what was really the core strength that they added that 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 really added to the chemistry that that got them to be the number one defense the last half of the year. Um, so I think that they're in trouble. All and right. Be happier. Uh, you and I both. You and I both on that. The other game that was played today was Golden State and Memphis. That was a great game to watch. I think any fan out there of basketball would have truly appreciated watching this game. With Clay Thompson pulling out with 30 seconds left, he did blow two free throws, so it didn't look good there. But they were able to hold down the defense, John Morant, for 30 seconds, so they proved out to be the one-point winner in Memphis. So, Joe, your thoughts on this series? I'm also picking Golden State in six. I think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to. He froze. Go they ahead. actually go some people <laughs> are really going to be happy with when it concerns Golden State winning in six. I hate that this has to take away from the game. What a beautiful game it was. The I've mentioned this. I don't, I don't know if I've mentioned it enough on the show, but I've definitely mentioned it a lot on Lakers ball. This, this officiating and ejecting guys or giving them a flagrant, this needs to stop. Adam Silver needs to start doing something about this. I am sick and tired of, of somebody trying to foul a guy so he doesn't score versus a flagrant. This was not a flagrant. He grabbed his jersey to stop him from scoring. Are they blind? I think Are he was they... talking about when he hit them in the hit him in the face by accident because he was going for the ball but accidentally hit him in the face. Okay, he hit him in the face. It, 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 that's what happens. You're playing basketball. You're under the hoop, like. And you do this in a playoff game of this magnitude? This has to stop. And grabbing a hold of the uniform and pulling a guy down could have resulted in a serious injury. It could have, secondly, but it didn't. It's a cha- Secondly, it's a BS cheap shot play. You know, come on, man, make a basketball play. He, it's he not was, a basketball he was, play. He was, in, he was not in the position to do anything. He needed to and stop. He punched, he would have punched a guy out in a half-court game, in a pickup game that did that to you. I would have gotten. I might have gotten angry, gone angry if the if if the stakes were high. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm, I wouldn't have said this guy needs to be kicked out. Oh, I, I don't. I, this this has yourself. to stop. This has to stop. They, <laughs> they, the NBA could have cost the, the the Warriors the game tonight, and I don't. I don't that should not be a t- flagrant play by Draymond. He deserved. Now, when he got out. when he kept kicking people in the package. In 16, I was for that. I'm like, dude, this is like of, a that's third one warning. That's why he did get kicked out because of his previous behaviors. This I think should... been, well, I'm just let me say this. I think if it had been any other player or almost any other player, I think it would have been a flagrant one. I don't think it was deserving of a flagrant two. I think it was actually not trying to throw him down by his jersey. I think he was trying to hold up his jersey and grab him. It's they were also sense. talking about hitting his face initially. They thought that was the part that was truly flagrant. I think he was actually just going for the ball when he actually, he just didn't come close and hit him in the face. Again, I think it was a flagrant one, but I did not think it was worth kicking him out. But it's Draymond Green, so of course they're going to end up kicking him out. Yeah, well, he has to understand that, that, you know, you, you develop your reputation, you know. Um, it's soft. It's a soft freaking league. Yeah, what do you want? You want bloody bodies laying all of there and more people injured than we already have, Joe? I want I mean, Rodman this, all this up in Alonzo morning. I want, I, I want yeah, Rodman I know. all I, over. You'd like to be able to I run want, over I want Rodman wrestling with Carl Malone at half court. 
Yes, I want that. <laughs> we just talked about how much we loved the Celtics and Bucks game. These guys were playing like beasts. I want more of that. I want tough guys. The reason why we're soft in this day and age is because we 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 made these guys soft. Hey, let me ask, say, well, yeah. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. This goes back to those days, Joe. Kevin McHale, when he closed line, Kurt Rambis. No, he didn't I'm get not ejected, asking for that. He, I'm he, asking no, for that. But did he get ejected? I no. don't think he got ejected. No, he got a he got a regular foul actually. That was a common foul. In the yeah, game. exactly. No, 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 guys, come on, common sense here. I'm not asking for clotheslines. No, I'm not asking <laughs> for kicks in the nuts. I'm not asking that. Okay, what I'm asking is there's a difference between trying to hold a guy from scoring versus kicking somebody in the nuts or clotheslining. Come on, man. This, 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 this doesn't need explanation. Is my answer. Well, Stop that back, crap and play basketball. Well, getting back to the game, again, I'm picking Golden State in six. Joe, your thoughts? On I the have series? no idea yet. I still am going to give the Grizzlies a, a shot here if they win game two. Tom, you, what are your thoughts on the series? Again, I'm I'm going to go out and say. I would have Warriors chosen Warriors in six before this, so it's Warriors in six. There you go, indeed. But the last two playoff games have yet to be played, and so those series will start on Monday as you hear this. For many people out there listening to the podcast, and thank you so much for doing so. It's Miami versus Philadelphia with Joe Allen beat out with, an, I guess, his second orbital fracture on his other eye. He's had one on one eye. He now has another, and he also has going through concussion protocol. So there's rumors he may be out until game three or game four. So it looks like he's definitely out for game one and two because he didn't even travel with the team. And then on the other side, you've got Kyle Lowry for Miami. He's out with game one with the hamstring issue. And also Jimmy Butler is kind of questionable right now as well. So, Joe, I want to hear your thoughts on this series. I think it's going to be very iffy at best. I think that a lot has to deal with James Harden and see if he can go ahead and produce that at the level that he once was. Can you get that vintage James Harden? James Harden? I don't think so. I think you're going to see Miami in seven. I think it's going to be a slugfest, but I think you can get Miami in seven. It won't go seven unless Embiid is healthy. Even without Lowry and uh, possibly Butler? No, there's there's a feistiness with Miami, and if if Embiid isn't there to play, uh, I wouldn't trust Harden in an important game uh, if, if, if if I had a gun to my head. There's there's. I don't trust that guy as far as I can throw him. That guy quits. He's a quitter, just like Simmons is. And when it, the stakes are even higher, he quits even more. So who do you have? You have uh, Miami, Miami in how many games? Miami in six at the most. Lake, Maybe even Lake, five. Laker Tom? Miami in six. There you go, indeed. Like I said, I'd say Miami seven, but I would, you know, Miami six. You never know. I'm winning well, on the road in Philly. Prove me wrong, I guess. Uh, there's still all three of us are having uh, are picking Miami, so yeah. need I digress on that. And the other is a actually a pretty good matchup. I'm very intrigued by it. it is Luca and the Dallas Mavericks? Jalen Brunson. This team has now gotten into the second round. The I guess the the weight that Luca's had about not getting out of the first round that is now off. And now they I I think they're going to play a lot more freely because of it. And now they're going to be p- facing the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns comes in comes in with with Chris Paul having a tremendous 14 of 14 performance in the previous game against New Orleans just a truly fantastic performance. I think he just cemented his his Hall of Fame status, you know, the first ballot if he didn't already because I think a lot, he's one of the greatest point guards of all time with according to many people and he sure, certainly proved it in that game. But guys, your thoughts on this series? Phoenix is still heavily favored, but I wouldn't count out Dallas. And I think Dallas might actually win it in six. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say Dallas in six. I'm just, I'm just, just saying, just saying. No, just saying. No, I, you think Phoenix, Phoenix? Phoenix in five. Phoenix in five. Okay. All right. Phoenix in five. All right. I'm saying Dallas in six just because I'd love to see Dallas win. But go ahead. Phoenix Make in six. Time. Phoenix in six. Okay. Yeah, everybody always loves the underdog, right? Except me. Yeah. Oh, you're not the Phoenix is the favorite going into this. I'm the one. I said I don't. Everybody likes the underdog, right? Yeah. Meaning in general. Anyway, yeah. But later, was like, ah, they haven't won before. I'm cheering for them. I'm like, I don't give a fly rat's behind. I want the best team to win. I don't care if they won eight in a row. 
It, I think a lot stems from Booker's health. How well is he going to come back from that hamstring industry, uh, injury? So rub, we'll rub, he, he learned from Kobe. He'll rub some mud on it. He'll be fine. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. The, the, the problem, the problem is, is that that Phoenix is that Aiton is going to kill him. He's That's going to point. kill Dallas. Good point. He better. They have nobody. Contract. Who can stop him. They have he, nobody who can stop him. In theory, you're right. Uh, you know, and he better Those play at that level. Five foot turnarounds that just he keeps just dropping in over and over and over and over. Do you think he's worth a max? No, but he will get it. He'll get it, I think. Um, I just don't know it'll be Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd have to say, I'd have to say that yes, I think he is worth the max for a player like him. It's not going to be, you know, it's probably like twenty eight million or something like that. It's not going to be forty. Um. Because this would be his first contract after his rookie contract, but yeah, I, I do. I, I frankly think that one of the big problems the Lakers have had, one of the big mistakes that the Lakers had, has been undervaluing and misevaluating the center position, and how important it is to the team and to win. Well, he was the number one pick, so re- I don't think yeah. we could really. No, no, I know, but when you get a chance to get a guy like that, yeah, you cannot let him walk. Especially when you're competing at the highest level and you're you have one of the best teams. Well, the only Sarver, thing is you are owned by Robert Sarver. Yeah, you're gonna need you're gonna. They're trying to get him out of there so they can get a bit, you know, somebody like Balmer to buy the team, have, and then they don't have, have to worry to about it. a lot more people in order to for them to get him out of there. Apparently, well, you are going to hear a lot of people going talking about that draft the year that Aiden was picked number one because you had Trey Young and also as well Luka Doncic right well, there Luka for his been uh, number one that year you, everybody knows that and, and, and all I say is if Luka Doncic wins the series you are going to hear it louder and louder and louder and louder about how they should have picked Luka ahead of you know DeAndre Aiden and all that but yeah, if but you if don't they, how about if, Atlanta Atlanta actually traded him Actually, well, they got, they they got, if they is, if they get Luca, they don't have CP3 at that point, right? And they don't have Aiden. I, I think I'd rather have an Aiden, CP3, and Booker team. I think it's a little bit more diversified. But Atlanta got two got another additional pick. I think they got DeAndre Hunter out of it, didn't they? Or is that right. was that from the Lakers? I think that might yeah. have been from the Lakers. But they got an additional pick out. They of got it, an additional know. pick, but for giving up Doncic to take Trey Young. Man, I I wouldn't have done that. I mean, I know it, it was it was the European a lot thing. Of people saying that he was a pudgy little white guy. Pudgy, it was it was a white guy from Europe. It was very it was, it was very that known time. that this this he was different. Yeah, but people still hesitated. They've never there's never been a Euro a a, a Euro guard that's really dominated in the NBA. Who do you know? Tony Parker. Uh, won several championships, man, and was the player on teams with oh, but the Argentina superstars. Of yeah. So, um, Mano Ginobili is another great. He wasn't Euro. a Euro. He was Argentinian. Yeah. Argentina. There's a couple of guys who got killed early. That you know, the guy from uh, from New Jersey, Drazen. Uh, yeah. Dragic. Uh, uh, Dra- uh, sorry, not Dragic. Um, Drazen. Drazen Petrovic. Petrovic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, I do want to say that, Good yeah, memory. I, again, we are different of opinion on that, but we, you know, still, I think it's going to be a good series. You know what? The worst, the person that's going to be feeling this the most is Vladi Divac because of the fact that he, he had a chance to pick <laughs> Trey Young or Luka Doncic and didn't do either. And you see how that turned out for him. So yeah. Would they last in the second one anyways? <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, they Second one is a black hole. Yep, so, and they're trying to look for their own coach, but need I digress on that. But if you have thoughts on the playoffs, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments or Lakers Fast Break, wherever you get your social media. Plus, remember the guys at LakersBall.com. Ox1947 is always hanging around there at LakersBall.com. He's also giving me a big hand on the YouTube comments, so truly appreciate it. And Laker Tom, check out his greatest articles along with Jamie Sweet and his five things at Lakerholics.com. Well, guys, another great round of conversations once again. Hopefully the Lakers will continue to go ahead and provide us news as we hit you up. I'm still targeting Wednesday night for our next conversation that will drop on Facebook at at Lakers Fast Break. So looking forward to that. Any last thoughts, guys, before we head on out? 
All talked out? That would be a first for you guys. Let's watch the Celtics lose. There you go. That's all that really matters for the rest of these playoffs. All right. Boston well, goes down. Yes, that's all. And hopefully want. nobody else gets injured, for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah this is enough of that, man. Um, I'm rooting for Giannis. I and am as well. He's a he's a bright light and a very dim. Well, I have to root for somebody from the West, just because. He's such a good kid, though. Yeah, you, they don't they kid. don't they don't promote him enough. He's a good. Yeah. That's a good guy. That's that's a uh, that's Tim Duncan, skinnier Tim Duncan. Well, if he won again, he might he might eventually want to come to Los Angeles. To I, I disagree with you on that, Joe, because the fact is he is not hard on the refs like Tim Duncan was. Tim Duncan was like. You know, making his faces and going after the reps on that. That's the part I love about him. He doesn't yeah. complain like a little girl. Yeah. So I, I I put him above that. So all right. Everyone out there, it is the Lakers fast break. We truly appreciate everybody watching and listening, but we'll catch you later this week. Hoping hopefully like again, like I'm saying, Wednesday night. Looking forward to going ahead and recording another Lakers fast break. And then everybody who catches this late Wednesday or Thursday. Wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, we truly appreciate it. As always, you being part of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.